Hi, it's Steve Grisetti again, co-founder of MoviePicks.com and author of the MoviePicks.com Guide to Adobe Premiere Elements. And here we are in Premiere Elements with part three of our basic training tutorials. In part three, we want to actually add our media to our timeline and begin some basic editing. Our media has already been added to our project assets, and so we can add them now to our timeline. And as you know, the first couple of clips you add to the timeline will automatically set up the project settings for your project, or they should. Usually the indicator is above the clip on the timeline. I'm going to widen this out by zooming in by pressing the plus button on my keyboard. Zoom out by pressing minus. Zoom in by pressing plus. You notice that above my clip, there is not an orange line along the top of the timeline. If you see that orange line, it's an indication that your project did not set up properly to match your clip. And you will always get the best performance and quality when your clip matches the specs of your project. Now, that said, uh, know that once we start doing some editing and adding some special effects, you are going to see an orange line above there, and we'll show you what to do when that happens. But in the meantime, my project is set up. I'm going to add a couple more clips here. Me driving in the rain in California. I'm also going to add some music down here to the music track. Now, you can use a number of audio formats. I recommend, whenever possible, to use a WAV file, W-A-V file. You can see that's what I'm using on my timeline right now. This is regardless of whether you're editing on a Mac or a PC, that W-A-V file, that WAV file, just seems to work so much better in Premiere Elements than uh, any other format, including MP3s or AIFFs. You notice also we can't really see any waveform down here at the bottom. The reason why is because the track is compressed or collapsed. There's a little toggle on the left here. If you want more vertical room on your timeline, you can collapse it like that. I much prefer to open as many of these as I can, so that way I can actually see the waveform and see what's going on on my timeline. Now there are a couple basic operations you will do when you're editing video. I'm just going to widen my timeline a little bit couple basic operations. For editing, most of what you're going to be doing is splitting, trimming, and arranging. Well, we've already done some arranging here. We put our clips down on the timeline in the order we'd like them to appear. But we also may want to trim. In other words, take some from the beginning or the end of a clip. To do that, I just hover my mouse over the beginning or the end of a clip. You notice where the open face of that little bracket is facing. It's facing off to the left. That means when I trim, I'm going to trim from the clip to the left. So I'm going to trim off the end of this clip. If I move it just a hair over here to the right, notice the open end faces the other direction. So I will be trimming from the beginning of the next clip. That said, it's pretty basic. Let's do some trimming. I'm just going to grab the end of this clip and just drag it in a little bit. Notice when I do, I see a little preview up there. On the left side of the screen is the preview of the new endpoint. So you can see as, as I move this to the left, I'm seeing the endpoint position change. So now that my clip is only four seconds long instead of eight seconds long, this is where it's going to end. The clip on the right is the beginning of the next clip. So when I let go, I want you to notice something. When I let go, all of the clips to the right slid to the left. That's called rippling. I'm going to Control-Z or Command-Z to undo that and show it to you again. So whenever you trim, or remove part of a clip or move an remove an entire clip. So for instance, if I were to select this clip and then press backspace or delete, you notice when that clip is removed, everything moves left to fill in the gap. That's called rippling. Now rippling works both ways. You can ripple when you remove a clip, everything moves left to fill it in. Also when I add a clip. So if I were to drag this clip down here to between these two clips, you notice that it shoves all the clips off to the right here. Notice what else it did to my music track, right? When I slid it in there, it broke up my music track and also slid it off to the right. So rippling is something you want to be careful about knowing what's going on when you're rippling. Uh, this could drive you crazy if, for instance, you had a, a music track down here and you were adding clips and it kept breaking your music track. I'm going to control Z or command Z to undo that move. I want to show you a quick trick how to get around that. There are ways I show you in the book for overriding rippling. I'm going to hold down the Alt key or the Option key on my keyboard, and when I drag this clip down here and insert it, notice that what it does is it inserts 
and we ripple only the track that I've added the clip to. Doesn't affect any of the other audio or video tracks. So if you're, do, if you're working on one track and you don't want your rippling to affect the other tracks, that's how you do it. Hold down the Alt key or the Option key. Now we've talked about trimming. That is removing from the end of a clip like this or moving, removing from the beginning of a clip like this. But there's also splitting. Splitting means slicing the clip. So if I position my playhead, right here and you notice when I hover over the CTI or the playhead I see this little scissors icon appear on it when I click on this it slices the clip in half and now I can select and just delete a part of that clip when command Z or control Z to undo that but you notice that the split didn't split the music track now there's a reason for that I'm going to command Z or control Z one more time to undo the split too all right I want to show you another situation let's grab a clip here we'll just throw a clip on top of that clip and we'll toggle it open too and this time I'm not going to select any clips on the timeline so I clicked off all the clips so nothing is selected watch what happens when I click on that split option and notice though that even though it split this clip and this clip it did not split our audio clip. Now the voice track and the music track are kind of immune to splitting. You can still split them if you select a clip on this track, on these tracks. So if I were to select the music, then it will split. When I click on the uh, scissors, there it is. See, now it's split. Control Z or Command Z to undo that. I'm gonna undo all the splits here. But notice that even when I have no other clips selected on the timeline, and I click on the scissors icon, everything splits except for these two lower tracks. So rippling a little bit complicated. Uh, you'll get used to it as you work with it. Just in my book, I show you how to override it, how to use it to your advantage, and make it function only when you want it to function. So if you want to know more about that program, be sure to check out that wonderful book, The MoviePix.com Guide to Adobe Premiere Elements. And if you want to know all about the program and see tips on some of the specifics of the program, be sure to check out our website, moviepix.com. Otherwise, please join me for basic training with Premier Elements here at moviepix.com.